Welcome. Today's video is a my, well, my thoughts on the new edition of Dungeons and Dragons using the basic rules. So, I just like to preface this: during the play test, I was terrified that D and D was going to come out and be this awful abomination. Like throughout, through and through, I was like, I I don't like this. I don't like that. Just various things. I wasn't a huge fan of during the playtest, but I was incredibly surprised about the end product through the basic rules for the new edition. So I ran a game uh, last night for a couple friends so we could you know play play everything. We tried everything except the cleric because we couldn't find a fourth player. But I read through the cleric, and I personally am a huge fan of what they've done for the cleric. I like a lot of what they've done, what what they did. You know, they they gave them a lot more abilities. You know, they're no longer just your buff heal monkey. They can actually do some damage now with their spells. So I'm a huge fan of what they did there. But going back to my thoughts, just on the the game, the addition as a whole so far, I was, you know, just, uh, on the first read through, I was incredibly happy with all the changes that they made. I felt that with the basic rules and, you know, obviously it'd be a little bit more complex in the player's handbook, but I felt they streamlined everything to a very nice level where I didn't feel anything was dumbed down per se, but I felt that extraneous choices and things that really didn't need to be there were, you know, more pushed to the side or, you know, removed for, you know, optional usage. Which I really liked because, you know, I run a lot of games where I have, you know, brand new players or very inexperienced players and, you know, they see a lot of options and they go, you know, I, I'm a bit overwhelmed. So I was really happy to see that, that the basic rules felt like, you know, I could have sat down with three brand new people and had no issue teaching them Dungeons and Dragons whatsoever. So I was extremely happy about that. And I also was really happy when I was reading through, you know, the various race ent entries and, you know, other various parts of it that, you know, a lot of people's gripe was that 4E took a step farther away from role playing and went very mechanic heavy, which I wouldn't say they took a step away from role playing, but they did go extremely mechanic heavy, which, you know, as it does, gets a little bit in the way of role playing every now and then because the system tries to account for everything. So, you know, with the new edition, you know, instantly, you know, they're bringing back more flavor of the races. In 4E, you know, and in previous uh, iterations, you had, you know, a very small entry for your race. You know, in 3, 5, and 2nd, there were larger entries than 4E, which had, you know, maybe a page. Uh, now you had maybe two pages, maybe three at some point, which went into, you know, a lot of depth about your race, you know, using their stereotypical world. Now, yeah. Those things may not apply to every world, but in their generic world, they attempted to get you involved in your race from the get-go, and I was a huge fan of that. Um, I was a huge fan of just what they did with the system. I felt that there was a, it was a lot more streamlined. Things like grappling were no longer a big pain in the ass. Um, it was very intuitive. Uh, there's no more, I roll to attack you, you could get attack of opportunity on me, I then have to roll my grapple, and you roll your grapple, and then all this, that, and the other. They removed all of that and made it one step. I roll versus your roll. That's it. So I was a huge fan of a lot of these streamlines. Also really liked how, you know, they improved cantrips to not just be, you know, awful spells that you, you know, yeah, used, you know, when you absolutely had no other choice, but... You know, now cantrips were like a, a good alternative option to casting a larger spell if you wanted to conserve your spells, which I was a huge fan of because that's what I really didn't like about spellcasters a lot of the time in um, earlier editions was your zero level spells were useless. I mean, they had some some minor amount of use, but, you know they didn't really bring enough power to be, you know, good alternatives to conserving spells. They were, they were your, I've got, you know, I'm not going to cast any real spells, so I'm just going to, you know, try and nickel and dime you down. That, I mean, yes, it is more realistic, if you can call magic realistic. It's, 
it this brings a little bit more fun to those lower levels so that you aren't you know going like grinding through them being like all right can we get can we get somewhere where i can have spells that are worth a damn so spell casting i was a huge fan with um all the really new options for the classes i was a huge fan of i felt all of them played really well very intuitive i was a huge fan of the background edition though i know that you can build your own backgrounds and everything i thought they were a great addition to bring to the game to you know help streamline character creation especially for new players but also if you want to play a character they you know necessarily don't want to build your own background if you want to you know challenge yourself to you know do a random background with a random specialty and you know build your character that way you know that's i think that's a great way to do it so i was a huge fan of all that and then one of the biggest things i was i really really liked seeing was the inspiration system which is a new system that essentially rewards you for role playing your character and you know a lot of other games you know, they, they have things that will reward you for role-playing. You know, World of Darkness has a bonus experience point. You know, I think Chen also has one as well. So there was a lot of other games that really, you know, they gave you something for role like for role-playing your character. And, you know, d and has always been the one that, you know, you either don't get anything for role-playing your character except personal enjoyment, which is fine. But let's be honest, not every player wants to role-play if they don't get anything in return. Though you probably shouldn't be playing with those people, but beside the point altogether. But this inspiration system is that, you know, you're role-playing, here's something tangible for, that you can use for role-playing. You know, it's not something that's game-breaking, it just gives you advantage on a roll. But, you know, advantage on a roll can be a big thing for a lot of people. And, you know, I really liked it that you get something tangible, you get an unadvantage for role-playing your character. So... Through and through, I really enjoyed this new edition. I felt that it played essentially like a, a streamlined second edition where the game tries to, you know, be mechanically uh, lightweight and let you kind of interpret and, you know, change what you need to on the fly. And, you know, it also had that very second edition feel of everything seemed optional that you could pick and you know you could pull different things apart and put something new in. So ultimately, I'm a huge fan of this new edition of D&D even though I did question it on its, you know, run up to being released and I personally am going to, you know, buy into the the new books. I may not buy all the supplements like I did for 4E and 3.5 and, you know, second, but I'm at least buying these core ones because I think this is a phenomenal take on D D, and currently for me this is my favorite edition of the game and i loved pathfinder and i i liked four and five is just blowing them all the way in my personal opinion so uh, you know if you've played it or you've got questions uh put them in the comments below and i'll reply to them but until next time